The soft rustling of leaves underneath, a pile of them slightly moving, and a big mighty horn shows up. It's the Hercules beetle, one of the largest beetles on the planet. Almost half of its size comes from that horn on its head. Thanks to this wonderful appendage, you know exactly it's a male. Females don't have it at all. Yet the name comes not only from the horn, but from the amazing ability of this giant to haul extremely heavy loads. Its strength is second only to dung beetles. A Hercules can carry as much as 850 times its own weight. If you ever see a bug with five heads wearing a pointy cap, no, you're not on another planet. It's a Brazilian treehopper. Straight from a sci-fi movie and onto your screens here, this insect is a real mystery. It's small and secretive, and much is still unknown about it. No one knows why exactly the treehoppers have these fuzzy balls on their heads. But they've only got one head after all. <laughs> that much is certain. Going for a swim in a freshwater pond somewhere in the African tropics. Watch your toes. You can get a giant water bug hunting them. It's a predatory bug and the largest of its kind. With those huge pincers, it's no wonder it's commonly known as an alligator flea and a toe biter. The bite of this water-dwelling monster is really quite powerful. It grabs its prey with the front legs and then slowly munches on it. And when I say it's a predator, I mean it. Giant water bug's favorite food is fish and amphibians. Despite their name, scorpion flies aren't related to scorpions. They get this moniker thanks to their tails, which look a lot like the notorious arachnids. Seeing a flying scorpion is a daunting sight at best, but fear not, these critters are small and gentle, and they can't even bite you. Only the males have such a tail, and they use it to attract females. Hey! What do you imagine when you hear the words walking stick? Certainly not a bug, but that's exactly what it is. Look at this twig and try to guess. Is there something alive on it or not? Yes and no. This twig is not a twig at all. It is a walking stick. These insects have developed a fascinating camouflage. They're long and unassuming, able to stay still for hours on end, which makes them look like dry twigs. But as soon as you touch one, it scrambles away on its gangly legs. Thanks to their appearance, predatory birds often miss walking sticks in the dense foliage. And their Australian kin give off a pleasant scent, something like peanut butter. Ooh, yum! House centipede. Turns out it only has 15 pairs of legs, two well-developed eyes, and two long, sensitive antennae to pick up smells and vibrations. It carries venom in the legs located by the head and near the mouth, and it can hold more than one prey in its legs using them like a lasso. All this makes your guest an excellent hunter. Somehow all the web pages you're looking at are telling you to leave the beast alone and be happy it's in your house. A lot of people are trying to get rid of them. But house centipedes are a natural and free pest control in your home. They'll help you get rid of bugs, flies, ants, moths, spiders, termites, and cockroaches. You, as a human, are simply not on their menu. They're active night hunters, and they don't leave webs or traps anywhere. They don't build nests in house either, and don't snack on your furniture, clothing, food, or pets. They move without making a sound and without leaving any dirty traces behind. House centipedes don't carry any diseases and in 99% of cases, get out at night when you can't see them. They're always moving around looking for prey. Because they move quickly, you might not notice them at all. They would only try biting you if you attack them first. Even then, they can't bite through skin. It feels like a light bee sting. Nah, nothing too crazy. Giant isopods are close relatives of shrimps and crabs living deep under the sea. They have alien-like bodies with dozens of sharp claws on the belly and four sets of jaws to hunt. But they don't always have food around them. That's why they slow down their metabolism to save energy and constantly live in semi-hibernation. When they're in danger, giant isopods curl up into a little ball and hide so that no one can find them. The star-nosed mole is the size of a hamster and the fastest eater in the world. It presses the creepy-looking star on its nose to the soil to find out what's in 10 to 12 different places in a second. 
like this star has 100,000 nerve fibers in it that send information to the mole's brain. Not a bad compensation for almost no eyesight and good enough to hunt insects while being perfectly harmless to humans. Tailless whip scorpions, unlike their relatives, don't carry venom or toxins and can't bite, sting, or hurt humans in any other possible way. They can't even chew. So they sit and wait for an insect to pass by and detect it with their legs. They make great pets, and owners even put them on their faces without fear. Mm-hmm. That's okay, you go first. I'll, uh, watch from over here. Ah, uh, you're out in the garden on a lovely summer day when you spot a yellow fluffy caterpillar crawling on a leaf. You look closer and notice it has five black tufts of longer hair sticking out. You think, how cute, and reach out to pet the fuzzy little guy. But hold it right there! That's an American dagger, and it's anything but harmless. Those seemingly soft, pleasant hairs are more like stingers. When they get embedded in your skin, it causes a painful rash and welts. It's not like a bee sting, either. This bug's venom builds up slowly. Eh, still want to touch it? Yeah, I thought so. Scarier than that is a puss caterpillar. You'll know immediately when this one gets its fluffy hairs in you. It feels worse than a bee sting. Then comes the rash, swelling, fever, and even muscle cramps and joint pain. It's the most poisonous caterpillar in the US. Young ones are yellow, and they get browner and hairier as they grow. The saddleback caterpillar looks like something from another planet. Also known as a slug caterpillar, they have pom-poms all over their bodies. Kind of like fuzzy cheerleaders. Those pom-poms are densely covered with hairs, containing a pretty powerful poison. If you get to touch this caterpillar, swelling, rash, and probably even nausea are guaranteed for a few days. The hag moth looks more like a spider than a caterpillar. All those arm-like tentacles coming out of its sides are covered in venomous hairs. One touch can leave you with painful irritation. If you ever catch any fuzzy caterpillar crawling on you, don't remove it with your fingers grab a pair of tweezers. If one manages to sting you, gently put tape on the side and peel it off to get all the hairs out. Just don't use the same piece of tape twice. You could end up sticking a hair back into yourself. Wash the area with soap and water and use an anti-itch cream if you need. You're walking along the riverbank. It's quiet, save for the water's peaceful burbling. The hot Georgia sun beats down on your neck. That's when you notice something strange on the ground. Looks like a quarter-sized black coin with a weird pattern on it. You bend over for a closer look. Is it a coin? This thing looks like an ancient seal with a symbol carved in it. It's probably from some long-lost civilization. You could sell it and make a fortune. You crouch down on one knee to pick up your newfound treasure. As soon as your finger touches it, you pull your hand back as fear wells in your gut. It's hairy. You go to pick it up again, digging your nails in the dirt around it to pull it out of the ground. That's when it moves. Your heart jumps in your throat. It's pounding so hard you can feel it in your head. The fear turns to horror when the coin wiggles its way out of the ground. It's no ancient treasure. It's a huge spider. A ravine trapdoor spider, to be precise. This hard, coin-looking growth on the back of its body serves as a shield. The eight-legged terrors burrow into the ground and plug it like a cork so hungry enemies can't get to them. Or, you know, giant confused humans like you. The spider is venomous, but its bite isn't toxic to humans. Who, lucky you! But I didn't say you wouldn't feel it. Best stay away from those sizable pincer-like fangs. Ow! Well, so much for your riches. Perhaps fortune awaits you in Mexico's Baja California Peninsula. You're walking on dried-up ground when you notice a long white stripe up ahead. You get closer. Oh, looks like a super long worm, you think to yourself. But it doesn't move like any worm you've ever seen. That's when you see it has arms and a head. This pale creature with black beady eyes is a Mexican mole lizard. It lives in the ground where all its dinner of insects and termites hang out. It rarely comes out, so you're pretty lucky to have seen this bizarre reptile. Now you're in a rainforest in northeastern Australia. Ahead, 
Half hidden among the trees, you notice something large and round. This mysterious figure lying on the ground is covered in black hair. At first, you think it's a bear curled up sleeping. But that wouldn't make any sense. There are no bears down under. You're getting closer when a twig snaps under your foot. The thing hears you and springs to its legs. It turns to you, and you now see this is a bizarre and beautiful bird. That black hair is actually a thick coat of long, fine feathers. This formidable fowl has a bright blue head with a large horn on top. It stands on two powerful legs with a dagger-like claw on each foot that can be as long as your hand. Take away those feathers, and you might mistake this thing for a velociraptor. But it's actually a cassowary, the most dangerous bird in the world. It could jump straight over your head if it wanted to, definitely high enough to kick you in the chest. And its blows are strong enough to break bone, not to mention that claw that can cut through anything like butter. This bird was made to hunt and avoid being hunted. Don't even consider running away. Not unless you too can sprint over 30 miles per hour. Diving into that lake over there won't save you either. This bird is an excellent swimmer. Best just to back away slowly and hope it doesn't come after you. Another creature that proves it's best to keep your hands to yourself is the panda ant. The naming is obvious. It's black and white and furry like the beloved bamboo-chewing bear. This furry little bugger lives in the forests of Chile. But don't go to pet this fluffy little ant. What you're looking at is no ant at all. It's a species of wasp. That black and white coloring serves one purpose – to warn others of this insect's powerful sting. And if that doesn't make you back away, the wasp will let out a squeaking sound. It sounds cute to us humans, but it means a painful sting is around the corner. These insects are loners. They don't live in colonies and don't have nests. They're also parasites. A female panda ant lays eggs next to the larvae of another insect. Then, the hatched babies use these larvae as food. Harlequin beetle looks formidable, and it is. This bug's body reaches 3 inches in length. And its front legs are often even longer than that. They help it crawl on trees, getting from branch to branch, and males also use them to impress females. Ooh la la! Despite the looks, harlequin beetles aren't really dangerous. They won't bite you even if you corner them. And if you, by any chance, grow cabbage in your backyard, you probably would try to corner them. These bugs feed on its leaves. Still, better not to touch them with your bare hands. They exude a foul-smelling liquid that both stinks and stings, causing skin irritation. Wear those gloves, will ya? You know what also stinks? Now, besides my socks, squash bugs. If you have a garden patch, these pests can be more than just a nuisance. They could spoil the squash you've been lovingly growing for the fall, hence the name. And if you squash them, they begin to smell just awful, hence the pun. Squash bugs are also often mistaken for stink bugs, but those are even more notorious. They begin stinking even if you so much as touch them. Wow, sensitive! Giraffe weevil is probably the most harmless little fella on this list, but not much is known about it yet. It gets its name from the long, spiny neck. This adaptation helps them build nests and fight over other weevils for food and mates. It may be placid, but the red covering of its wings lets predators know the bug is either foul-tasting or poisonous, or both. Likewise, you shouldn't eat monarch butterflies or their caterpillars. These beautiful insects are often kept as pets and were once almost chosen as the national insect of the US. But the little-known fact is that they're highly poisonous. Monarchs feed on milkweed, a plant containing a potent toxin. They've acquired immunity to it, and as a side effect, butterflies accumulate the toxin in their bodies. This makes them a very unappetizing dish for birds and other predators. The concentration is so high that even humans that accidentally, or not, eat a monarch caterpillar can experience quite unpleasant consequences. Mm. Mealworm beetles are abundant almost anywhere, so you must have seen them. 
The most probable place to find them is a poultry farm, though. Mealworm larvae are often used to feed farm birds, and that's where the danger lies. Mealworms carry lots of diseases that can spread among birds and then to humans. They also like to eat chicken food and even insulation on farms, so they're not the best choice of a meal for birds, despite their name. And adult beetles produce a poison that's not harmful in small doses but causes allergy in high concentrations. If you happen to be at a poultry farm, make sure you avoid those beetles. Tiger beetles come in lots of shapes and colors. But they all have two traits in common – long, thin legs and sharp, sword-like mandibles. Those legs allow them to run faster than almost any other insect. So fast, in fact, that when they're on a hunt, they sometimes have to stop and look around for a few seconds. Their eyes and brain simply can't process the picture quickly enough, so they wait for the landscape to load around them. Most tiger beetles are harmless, but if you see one with an orange pattern on its back, don't touch it! These bugs produce cyanide to protect themselves, and this chemical can do a lot of harm both to animals and people. If you touch a tiger beetle and then rub your mouth or eyes, it might cause severe irritation. Oh look! See that wonderful pattern on a flower over there? Looks like an impressionist painting, and in a sense it is. That's a Picasso bug. These critters feed on plants and are mostly placid, but think twice if you want to take a closer look. It's not a ladybug. When touched, it'll emit a strong odor that's not exactly flowery. Worse still, you might have a hard time getting rid of the stench even hours after the encounter. Whew! Dung beetles have no psychic powers, but they don't need them. They're the most powerful heavy lifters in the world. Their favorite expression is, been there, dung that. No, really. A single dung beetle can haul a load a thousand times its own weight. It's like a person lifting 10 elephants. These bugs need their namesake substance to eat and lay eggs into. Mmm, yum. And they differ between each other. The most popular ones are rollers, but there are also tunnelers and dwellers. Rollers are the ones that make the famous balls. Tunnelers dig right into the ground when they find food, and dwellers feel just fine sitting on top of their finds and not moving anywhere. King of the hill, if you will. See that beautiful pink flower? It's an orchid. And that similar one next to it? It's an orchid mantis. These tricky insects have mastered the art of mimicry to excellence. They can hide in plain sight, and even the sharp eyes of birds of prey often can't recognize them for what they are. Mantis sits absolutely still, waiting for its prey to come closer. And when it does, the predator lunges at it at mind-numbing speed. After lunch, the mantis assumes its original position and waits for the next unwary insect to come by. Desert locust is a bane of many crops because it comes in thousands at a time and eats everything that grows on land. One locust can't do much harm because it's just an overgrown grasshopper, but they typically don't travel alone. Locusts are often pictured flying in a swirling cloud over a field and landing all at once. That picture is pretty correct. These loud insects can fly dozens of miles at a time without rest, and they fly quite fast. But the most incredible thing about them is that locusts can keep up the same speed for the whole duration of their flight. Unlike birds that depend on the wind, locusts can adjust their wings and control the amount of lift they generate. This helps them use the wind to their advantage and not be thwarted by it. Okay, time for me to bug out. Bye!